Mad Hurand Hagen stood there for a while. There seemed to be a struggle going on in his heart whether to go to the cottage or to the fort. Then he went near the palanquin on which he was carried and said something to the Savakai Toshi and the guards. He also took something from inside the robe. The men left carrying the Sivaka. The light of the lamp went with them. As Mad Hurand Hagen came back towards the hut, Mad Hurand Hagen was startled for a moment when he saw a man suddenly emerge from behind the tree beside which he and Maithwadi were talking. He is no one else. The madman who had escaped from the underworld and came with Deva was Thyri Raman. He still looked like a madman. Wasn't he surprised that his appearance and his sudden appearance at that place caused horror to Mad Hurand Hagen? The next moment, Mad Hurand Hagen brandished the sharp dagger he had taken from Sivakai. The sage took him by the hand and said, Sir. Stand. I am not their enemy. He said. If not an enemy, then who are you? My friend. Mad Hurand Hagen asked. Yes, sir. Just a friend. Mad Hurand Hagen laughed softly in a voice full of hostility and grief and said, You have found a good friend. When the world slips away from me, I have found you. He said. Yes, sir. I can do for you what no one else in the world can do for you. Said the thinker. Tell me what it is, and we'll see. Tell me quickly that it's time. Why is it so late? Satarai Raman asked and looked at Madhurantha. Just to go to the palace, why else? Are you going to go back to a palace you don't have a right to? Madhurand Hagen was shocked again, hey? What are you talking about? What do you know? How do you know? Tell me quickly. Otherwise. He shouted at the dagger in his hand. Sir. Do not draw your sword. Keep it ready for use when confronted by your enemies. Not long ago you and the great queen who raised you were standing under this tree talking. Neither of you noticed that I was standing behind the tree. Aha. Did you learn the secret by eavesdropping? Did you intercept me with such audacity? No, no. I already knew what the Maharani told them, I knew more than that. She told them that Madarasi was not the mother who raised them in her womb, and that the Kandaradiths were not their father. She would have told them who their mother was. But she would not have told them who their father was. Madhurand Hagen stared at him and said, Do you know that? He asked. Yes, I know. Madhurand Hagen panicked that the crazy looking man was going to claim him as his father. How do you know? Who are you? He asked. I am their father's servant. When Satarai Raman said that, Madhurand Hagen's face became clear. Satariman moved a little closer and said in a soft voice, Sir. Their father. What he said fell on Madhurand Hagen's ears. Madhurand Ha's head was spinning. The one who saw himself falling down managed to hold on to the poochas of Kuryudi Raman and said, Is it true what you have said? Am I really the king's son? He asked. Yes, sir. I came here many years ago to tell them this. I was looking forward to seeing you privately. Unfortunately, the little reaper saw me in the palace gardens. He caught me and put me in the dungeon. When did you escape? How? Only today, I escaped with the help of a young man named Vandiyadevan. Aha! Uh -huh. I heard too, is he not the one accused of killing Carrie Kaler? Yes, sir. But it was not that youth who actually killed Aditya Carrie Kaler. What do we care about that? Let him be the killer? Where is he now? There he is in the height of a visible fence some distance away. Waiting for me and his two horses. He must be angry now about my taking time. I don't care a bit about it. I have met them unexpectedly. When did you get here? Said Mad Hurand Hagen. We came a little earlier. We came to know that there were two horses near this hut. While looking for the horses, you and your mother who raised them came on the road with torches. By that light we found the horses. I saw Vani after many years. You came back to this hut while speaking in her mute language. 
we didn't expect you to come to this hut. Van Dye the van ran away to cover the fence. Vani and I stood behind this tree for a while. Then she too went into the hut. I was the only one standing here. As a result, I got a chance to see them. Well, what are you going to do next? I will do as you say sir. Are you going to go back to the Tanjore Palace even after knowing the truth about your birth? Remember that some people still know that you are not a prince of the Chola clan. The first minister and his one man all Alwarkadian will know that someday. Yes, yes. I don't want to go to Tanjore Palace either, what do you think? There are two horses behind that fence. Go to that fence as if you were going into the hut. I am talking to Van Diathavan for a while. Throw your swords at him and kill him. Let us both mount the two horses. Let's go to Sri Lanka and go to Sri Lanka, King Chola. An enemy of the clan. A hereditary friend of the Pandya clan. I know the king of Sri Lanka well. I know that the Pandya clan has a bell crown and a diamond necklace. What do you say? Madhurand Hagen thought for a while. His mind built so many fortresses in those few seconds. Sir. Time is running out. What is their decision? Van Dye the van will come here. You mean to kill him? Give me the dagger in their hand if they hesitate. No, this sword has other work to do. I know about Van Diadeva. May the good warrior take him with us. Let's call, but another horse. What's missing from a horse? I'm still Crown Prince Madhurand Hagen. After saying that, he laughed angrily. Then, you go. Tell him to be patient for a while. I'll have a word with this Kategor and be back soon. He said. Satirai Raman went looking for the fence where Van Diathavan was hiding. Good darkness. In the distance, a little light came from the Raja path from time to time when some people carried torches. In the dim light that came from far away, two majestic patrons were seen standing tied to the fences. But Van Diathavan was missing. He called out in a soft voice, no voice was heard in response. Well, it would be better if we got lost as him, thought the thinker. When Van Diadeva and Gara Truman first came to Nandavan's hut, it was dark. A few rays of light peeked out from a small lamp burning inside the hut. Vani Amayaro, who went to the lotus pond to draw water, hesitated to see two people coming in the dark. First Van Diadeva's face appeared in her vision. Immediately her face lit up, she had not forgotten that Synthan Amuthan had brought him once before. She nodded her head in welcome. When she saw Karuthraman who followed behind her, she was terrified and stood in awe as if she had seen a demon. Satariman tries to talk to her in sign language and somehow calms her panic. Leaving them both alone, Vandiyadeva approached the hut. The door was then bolted. He peered through the computer. Instead of pleading for his life, Sendan Amuthan was smiling and talking to Pungajali. Sempi Yan Madhavi, Madhurand Hagen, and their entourage arrived while they were thinking whether it would be a good idea to interrupt their conversation and say goodbye. Immediately he left the hut and jumped over the fence. When he saw the horses that were tied there, Alwarkadian was convinced that he had not cheated him till then. He was waiting there for his arrival. Van Diadeva lost his patience when Satarai Raman did not come even after all the Sivakas, Parivaras, and Tevardas had gone. He jumped over the fence again. He noticed that Madhurand Hagen and Karutha Raman were talking under the tree. He did not want to be seen by Madhurand Ha. A doubt arose in his mind as to what kind of private conversation Karutha Raman and Madhurantha were having. A part of their conversation fell into his ear. When Madhurand Hagen went towards the hut, Van Diadeva, unaware of him, followed him. Madhurand Hagen went to the door of the hut and hesitated whether to knock the door or not. Then a loud laughter was heard from inside. I don't know if Madhurand Hagen's mind was changed by the sound of that laughter, or if he didn't have the courage to do what he had planned. Immediately he turned back and started walking towards the direction from which Thukaruman had gone. Van Diadeva ran to the cover of a tree beyond to escape his sight. As he flowed like that, 
a perverse sight appeared in his eyes. On the back wall of the hut was a multi-purpose hall. Through it the light of the lamp burning in the hut was coming out a little. In the light he saw a human figure standing menacingly with a short spear in hand. The figure peered in through the porch of the cottage. Then the javelin began to be aimed through the multiverse. But did not throw away immediately. Targeting was also a resurgence. At the same time, the sound of horses' footsteps was heard. Van Diathevan hesitated for a moment. If both the horses are gone, his escape will be impossible. If you go to save the horse, you will be unable to stop what this black shadowy figure is planning to do. Van Diathevan's hesitation did not last more than a minute. If the horses go, let them go. His duty is here now. He slowly walked towards the black figure standing with a spear in hand. A voice, a panicked female voice, was distinctly heard from inside the hut, wheel. Van Diathevan leapt away from the guard. The person who was about to throw the spear inside heard the sound of Van Diathevan running and turned back. He hurled his spear at him with a swift return. The spear plunged into Van Diadeva's rib. He fell down. Without even looking at what happened to him, he threw the spear and ran away. 